Hi, we've been working on this oscilloscope and spectrogram app for uh, about a couple of months now. And uh, a few weeks ago, I put out a video with uh, an early demo of it. Now we're very close to release, and so I want to show you uh, some of the stuff that we've got working that wasn't there last time we did a demo. The first thing I want to demonstrate is this um, frequency mode. This is something really cool that we sort of developed over a, a period of time. I'm using Xeon synth to generate uh, sounds from MIDI notes. And I'm going to let this uh, oscilloscope fill the screen so we can see more clearly what it's doing. Um, so we, we have three modes in this app. The first mode is a trigger mode, which is, is similar to a standard analog oscilloscope. As you move this line, um, there we go. So when the, the input level goes above this trigger level, then it will draw the screen. And that's, that's the standard way that traditional oscilloscopes have guaranteed that every time they draw the screen, uh, if you have a wave that's oscillating, that it doesn't... Um, well, let me show you what would happen if you didn't trigger. So this is, this is a non-triggering mode, where uh, in this case, every, every time it draws the wave, the wave could be at a different phase, a different timing, so it's not stable on the screen. But by triggering, um, the app will wait until the wave reaches a certain part of its cycle before it draws, and that guarantees that every time you redraw the screen, if the sound is, is repeating itself, you'll, you'll keep it, uh, the previous line that you drew in phase with the next one, and it looks as if it's not moving on the screen. Um, so that's, that's standard analog oscilloscope stuff. This is something new, um, new to us. I haven't seen anybody else do it before. So this is taking the same idea of triggering, except instead of triggering on the, the um, instead of monitoring the level of the, the oscillation and when it gets, for example, it gets above here, uh, like we were doing here, when it gets above this line, then I'm going to trigger. What this one does is it has a timer and uh, you set a frequency, you set the, the octave you want and the note you want and you can tune it in cents and you can see there's a line here. Um, I'm going to go to spectrogram mode. So, uh, well, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. So there's this line here moving which indicates there's a frequency scale on the right and that indicates what uh, you know, here I'm at 441 hertz, and that's just below 500 on this uh, bark scale frequency. Um, so you see what what frequency you're choosing when you do this. But there's a there's a really cool thing you can do with this. For example, I'm going to play. This is the note C4 on the keyboard, and I see that the root note here is. Let's pause it. I see that the root note, uh, root frequency is right there, and when I drop the line there, automatically the octave is set at 4, the note is 60, and uh, this thing automatically locks each note in tune. So just by looking at this spectrogram on the right, by seeing what the frequencies in this sound are, you can uh, lock in on exactly what, no what MIDI note that was by looking at the spectrogram. You can go even further than that though. Um, so I'm going to go to the mix view where I'm seeing the oscilloscope and the spectrogram together and I'll resume uh, so I'm seeing a real-time graph. So let's turn the volume down a bit. So here's the note C4 and it's, it looks perfectly stable on the screen and that's not because the note's not changing but because the timer uh, is locked in at exactly this note C4 so what happens is it draws the screen and then the timer will wait until exactly one period of oscillation is over before it draws again. And that's preserving, keeping this wave stable in, in almost the same way the trigger mode did, except that it will only be stable when I'm playing this note. So watch this. Um, take the volume down a little lower. I don't want to uh, make it hard to hear. So if I go up a half step, now it's not in tune with this note anymore. So it's it's only stable when I'm playing exactly that note, and in fact, it has to be exactly that note. If I'm even a few cents off, you see the wave starts moving. Um, so this is really nice because let's say that you're analyzing a waveform uh, that isn't perfectly in tune. For example, let's take this, I'm gonna play C3, and let's take the fine tuning a little bit off, off course. 
I'm going to go flat a little bit, uh, and then let's come, let's come back here. Um, so now this note is flat a little bit, <coughs> and if I would like to find out how much flat it is, I can adjust the fine tuning until till the wave stands still. It looks like it's not an exact number in sense, but I'm trying to decide if minus eight or minus as minus six is the number we want. There it is. So now I have it. That that note that the synthesizer is synthesizing is C4, six cents flat, and that's 260.7 hertz. Um, so the workflow here, once again, would be if I'm trying to identify a note that I'm hearing, like I get this note, first thing I would do is lock in on the um, lock in on the root frequency down here. In fact, you don't even have to be on the root frequency if you're an octave, if you're on the first harmonic. So each of these lines is one harmonic. The first harmonic is exactly an octave above the fundamental. So when I'm, I'm looking at that first harmonic, it's saying that I'm on A4, but in fact, the root note is A3. And I can see I'm a little bit flat, and so I can move that fine tuning, and there we are, four cents flat. Um, so this is, this is really nice. This is gonna be really nice if you're, uh, if you're working on samples, like you, you have an audio sample playing somewhere and you wanna cut that sample and you wanna know exactly what frequency it is. Um, there, are, there have been other uh, spectral analyzer apps before, but they would only get you the accuracy that you could get you know, from this method. And they wouldn't allow you to, to really hone in on it because in order to really hone in on that, you need to see uh, both the spectrogram, this uh, frequency graph and the oscilloscope and when you get them both that's what you need to lock in on the pitch um, so that's the big uh, the big new feature that we didn't demonstrate last time in case you are um, this is the first time you're seeing a video about this app I'll just quickly go through the other things it's got going on you've seen the trigger already um, trigger is interesting like for example if I want to see what happens you know what let's let's throw the synth away and go with um, the microphone. So let's say that I, I want to see uh, what's happening when there's a note attack on a guitar or a, a click sound or a drum sound. I want to see exactly what's, what's up with that sound. So um, the first thing I want to do is set the level up reasonably high so that, like if I set the level at zero, it'll be triggering every time the wave crosses this level and it's triggering all the time. I only want it to trigger on the attack of a new note. So I'm gonna set the level up high, that does it. But now uh, I'm missing the, you can, you can see it started very abruptly, I'm missing the first part of this sound. So I'm gonna set a little bit of look ahead, we'll give it probably two milliseconds is enough. There it is. So now every time I snap, you get the whole, the whole picture from the start uh, and I can, I can zoom out a little bit. Uh, I could also zoom in if I if I wanted. Uh, hold on. Yeah. So after I, uh, I guess I can't do that. Okay. Um, right. And then I could look also at the spectrum of that, or I can see spectrum and waveform at the t same time. And then we have these intermediate modes. If you're more interested in the waveform and just want a little spectrum as guidance, you can do that. Or if you're mostly inter interested in the spectrum and don't want so much waveform, uh, we've got this with just a little bit of waveform. Um, right, what else do we have? So there's a two-channel mode uh, in case you're in stereo and you want to see that. Uh, there's an XY. Let's do, we, did we do this XY? I don't think we did this last time. This is kind of cool. Um, so there are, uh, I'm going to get tube AU up here. There are these, uh, really interesting things people are doing with oscilloscope, OSC, I, I should know how to spell it if I'm advertising an app, uh, but I don't. Oscilloscope music. Um, so oscilloscope music is electronic music where the left and right channels control the position of, of, um, of drawing on an oscilloscope screen. Uh, and so it's interesting to see, uh, it's interesting to see that if you use the XY mode, 
you can see that these uh, this type of music draws shapes on the screen. Unfortunately, I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. Unfortunately, uh, because of YouTube compression, um, you would have to actually download the WAV file if you wanted to get a really accurate picture of what the music was supposed to look like. Here's a, a picture of the original. Um, because uh, when you go through the AAC compression that uh, uh, YouTube is using, you're losing some, um, some detail in the high frequencies and that tends to distort some of the shapes. Um, the other thing you could do with this that's probably more useful than oscilloscope music is uh, you can use it as a vector scope. Um, how am I going to get this back on the screen? Oh, that, that was easier than I thought. Uh, let's, just, let's just listen to any song. I like Mr. John Mayer, so we'll listen to him. Um, right. So, in a more, more ordinary musical context, let's get, let's get that off the screen. Um, there we have it. So, in a more ordinary musical context, this vector scope is something like uh, similar to what we have in our own stereo, uh, stereo width control plugin, where um, you can see the stereo width of the music. So, if, if it's in mono, you'll see a straight line like this, and as the music gets wider, you'll see more, uh, more spread in this, along this axis. I think that's, uh, that's about enough of a, a second demo for this. Um, I think this app will probably be out uh, very soon in beta. Um, most of you will probably watch this video long in the future, so um, if you're listening from, from uh, two or three weeks in the future, uh, this app is probably out already and we will have the description, uh, the link for the app in the description of the video. One last thing, if you uh, like our apps or you like our videos, uh, hit like because that helps us grow our channel and hit subscribe so that next time you're browsing through YouTube, if we've got something new, you will uh, likely see it in your, 